click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we will talk about the relational database system. This relational database is mainly concerned with the table or a relation and based on that we can say that what are the attributes, what are the DDL and DMLs that are needed to be applied on this relation to get the database system work. And another thing that we need to keep in mind that the access cannot be always made on this SQL DDL DML. Sometimes we can have to provide the host language specification. So we will all discuss about these things. Relational database is a collection of the relations or the tables and the relationship among them. So there are two things we need to keep in mind. One is the tables or a relation, then the multiple tables consisting, and we need to maintain a proper and consistent relation among these tables. So there should be referential integrity as well as the other constraint or integrity problems in the database management system. First, we will talk about the tables. The table is the basic unit of the storage area that is called a relation. In a table that can contain multiple columns, which are called the attributes, of which we can provide the values to the table and feed it to store in the database system. So after that, that we have stored the values in the databases, so we can fetch this according to our need. So we will first see that what are the tables and how it does it look like basically so we can get that what are the relationship among them to get stored. Here we can see that we are taking two of these relations or tables. One is the instructor, another is the department. So they are containing this are the attributes ID, name, department, name, salary and for the department table it is department name, building and budget. So when we are talking about this one, this relational database is mainly concerned with the record based model or what we call a relational model. As we have described earlier that the relational model contains the relationship among it. So it must contain and maintain the referential integrity. Referential integrity is the integrity that provides that a value in some certain attributes in a particular relation can be used to determine another values or the particular same values on another relation on that particular field. Here we can see that department name lies in the department as well as in the department name of the instructor. So in the first one, the department is the department name of a primary key that is a unique name provider which is used as a referential integrity or a secondary or foreign key to the instructor table. So all that we can see here is a basically physical level of interface or the view. Now we will see that how does it look on the logical level which contain the actual records or the values. We will see an example of one or two. Now on the logical level of abstraction, we can see that there are an instructed table which is containing the actual values of 222 ID, L name, department name of physics and salary $20,000. So here we can see that the department name are containing physics and chemistry. Although it can contain more than one, one physics and more than one chemistry, as any instructor can have their department name same. 
But while we are coming to the department table, we can see that there should be only one physics and one chemistry as it is the department and the building of that particular department at the budget associated with the department. So here we can see the clear distinction between the primary key and that is being referenced as the referential integrity or the secondary key. So this foreign key can have a duplicate name and that is definitely not a data redundancy because deleting a particular record, say for the Joseph, will not hamper the chemistry department at all. But here, if we can delete this chemistry department from the department table, so this will contain an inconsistent data. So that is all we will discuss later. For now, that is the relational part, that is the table, which is containing this in the logical level or the user level view. Next, we will go to the SQL DDL and DML that is used to access and manipulate data or the schemas on a particular data definition language and data manipulation language. So the relational database is all about, as we can prescribe, that containing the relationship among the data. So here one relation I have already defined, that is a referential integrity or a primary key and foreign key relation among this instructor and department table. So any instructor can be of the department and the department should be prescribed in the department name or the department table. So now we can see that how the DDL and DML is being used for this serving of instructor and department relationship. First, we need to create the schema of the relational database system and that is being created as we know by the DDL or the data definition language. So we will see that how to do that. To define a schema, we will describe with the create table command in an SQL. Here we can see that a create table command that is create table that is the table name or the relation name followed by this braces start and this particular attributes name and their data types. And it is separated by a particular special character to demulate the different types of data types or the attributes that is used here a comma. And we can say after defining all the data types and the attribute names, we are closing the braces and putting a semicolon special character to say that that the DDL has finished, now we can create the table or the schema base for this particular instructor relation. Now we will see that how to use the DML to actually maintaining the relationship among this instructor and department. First, we will see a simple DML that can be used to manipulate data from the instructor table. For example, say we are fetching the salaries of the instructors that are using above 10,000. So we will fetch all the names and the department names along with the salaries that we can say a record or a tuple about an instructor who is having the salary of more than 10,000. So we can write it along it. You can see here that select star means all the data or the records from the instructor relation so that we can get the salary is above 10,000. So the where clause actually specifies and it putting the constraint that the salary is greater than 10,000 and we will fetch only this data. That is the main advantage of a database or other than using not of a file type processing. So now we are using a single relation or a table, that is why we haven't specified any table name before the attribute name. But however, if we are using a multiple relation in the table of the DML, so we have to use the table name. Here is an example. So for example, say when we are fetching an instructor who is a dipping department number of physics and a salary given than 10,000, we have to fetch the budget of that building or the department. 
So first we are fetching all the department names and then I have to check the budget of the department and along with which, which instructor is associated. So we can write it this way. So here we are fetching the details of the instructor who is having the salary of greater than 10,000 and the department also is having the budget of less than 90,000. So we will get all the results from the instructor table and the department table. We are combining these two tables by a separator called the comma. And now we are specifying the particular attribute name is predefined with the particular relation name so that we can see that the attribute is coming from the particular relation or table. So in this way, we use the DML and the DDL to handle the relationship among the tables or the relations. Now, a more aspect that is important to a relational database is that, that often SQL is not the standardized one to use it in actual real-time environment. Here we can use the host programming languages like C++, C++ or Java. When we are using these host languages, there should be a way to access this query based or query processing inside this host language. So there are two ways. One is to use an application programming interface, say for the Java one, the DBC that is a Java Database Connect and C1 is the Object Database Connect or ODBC. So by this way, we are connecting a particular SQL or any other database languages to the host languages and then using the host language to make use of this particular ODBC or JDBC to get execution of the statements and the result is directly outputted to the host language. This is because sometimes the query languages are not able to display the result or even communicate over the network. And the other way of this doing this is the host language directly translating the particular DDL and DML by any compiler or interpreter. So the compiler will then compile this and then make it in a host language environment so the host language can execute these statements. So in this way a relational database is handled basically on a relation by the DDL DML and the host language's premises. That is all for today. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.